Hey plant fam! Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. This is my jungle and if you're not new here, I appreciate you for coming back. So, Today I have a Hoya video for you guys because you've been asking me for more Hoya videos. I've been really amped up about Anthurium, so I haven't really talked about my Hoya too much, but I do have a Hoya tour coming for you guys. I know you've been asking me for years to give you a tour of my Hoya collection, so we're finally going to do that very, very soon. There's also some construction going on in front of my house. <laughs> So if you hear some of that noise, I'm hoping that the microphone doesn't pick up on it. I do apologize for that. I've been waiting all day <laughs> for them to finish and it's taking so long. So anyway, today I have a video that was actually recommended and requested by one of you guys. I asked you for some suggestions and I forget who it was. I apologize, but I do appreciate the suggestion. They wanted me to do a video about trailing Hoya versus trellised Hoya. And I'm going to be really straightforward with you. It's really just what you prefer. There is no, you should trellis this one. You should let this one trail rules to Hoya. You can do whatever the heck you want to do with your plants. It really comes down to the aesthetic of it. So I'm going to explain to you some of the reasons maybe why you would want to let your Hoya trail versus trellis so that we can kind of wrap our heads around this concept and you guys can make an informed decision when it comes to your Hoya. So I'm not going to lie, I am in favor personally of trailing plants versus plants that need to be grown on a pole or a plank or on a trellis. They take up a lot of space and there's just something so satisfying to me about a hanging basket. I always used to get the most excited about the hanging baskets in Home Depot when I first started collecting plants, when I first really got into plants. The hanging baskets always got me the most excited. I loved my pothos so, so much. Hoya were no exception. I had lipstick plants, trailing peperomia. Now I mostly just have Hoya and some Dishidia. I do love a good Ripsalis as like a hanging basket as well, but this video is about Hoya. So I am going to show you some of my personal favorite trailing Hoyas and the reasons why they look so good trailing. So I think that it mostly comes down to the thickness of the stems and the space between nodes. So let's go a little bit deeper into that by showing you my variegated Hoya Wiedii. So this to me is the best example of a good trailing plant. I mean, so is the Hushkuliana. I'll pull her out too, but this one is such a great example of a Hoya that I think looks best trailing because of the shape of this plant. You can see the stems on here are relatively thin and they hang really, really nicely. But another thing that makes this a great trailing plant is like I said, the space between the nodes is small. So this is called the internodal spacing. <laughs> so you have a node everywhere that the petiole meets the stem. You go leaf, petiole, stem. So everywhere the petiole meets the stem on a plant, you have what is called a node and nodes are typically where growth comes from. So the space in between the node here is called the internode. So when you have really nice tight internodal spacing on a plant, I think it just looks super duper nice as a trailing plant. Another aspect of this one in particular that makes a great trailing plant is the shape of the leaves because they are elongated, the way that they hang, they kind of fill in those spaces. So you don't really see the stems, which just again, adds to why this is such an attractive trailing plant. Can you grow it on a trellis? Absolutely. Do people grow it on a trellis? Absolutely. If you want to do that, that is your prerogative, but she does, in my opinion, look best as a trailing plant. And she makes an absolutely beautiful trailing plant. One of my personal Favorite. So again, this is my variegated 
way at EI. And I've seen these popping up in Home Depot. So if you guys want one, you should definitely be able to go and snag one. So I'd say that the top two reasons why a plant is going to look better trailing is the thickness of the stems because we'll get <laughs> we'll get there when we talk about the trellising ones and mostly the internodal spacing so if you've got tons of stem and not a lot of leaves it's not really gonna look great as a trailing plant so I brought over my obovada as an example of one that I have in a hanging basket that probably would do better on a trellis and another thing you want to consider is the reason why we trellis our Hoya is because they are epiphytic, they like to climb. So giving them something to climb on actually encourages more growth. So as you can see, I have this crazy tendril going over here, this crazy tendril going over here, and in reality, if I attached it to something, it would probably throw out its leaves a whole lot faster and give me a lot more growth, but, I bought it like this and I just have left it like this because look at how thick this stem is. And you can see there's a lot of space between these little clusters of leaves, which just makes it less attractive as a trailing plant, in my opinion, because now you have this empty space here. So the issue with these thick ass stems though is that once they harden off it's really really hard to get them on a trellis <laughs> so this one's not so bad I think I could still manage to get this on a trellis without snapping the stems but for things like this if you want to trellis it you have to make sure that you're doing it when the stems are still kind of soft and new. So I think that a general rule of thumb is that if you have a plant that grows like this, where the stems are pretty thick and the internodal spacing tends to be fairly large, that they will do better, more aesthetic anyway, on a trellis. So I probably should take that advice and get this one growing because look, it's going to look so much more full once I get it up on a trellis. So this is my Obovada Inner Variegated Splash, in case I didn't mention that, and she's a really great example of a plant that is currently trailing that should probably be climbing instead. And again, Hoya are just innately climbers. Some of them are creepers. Very few of them are creepers, like Cartesii, Serpens, Tang Chong Ensis, ones like that are more creepers. They want to crawl along the ground but majority of them are looking to grow upwards and apparently counterclockwise, which is a thing. So if you do trellis your Hoya, it is good to make sure that you're trellising them counterclockwise because that's how they grow. So if you do it the other way, it might actually stunt their growth a little bit, which is really fascinating. So an example of one of my favorite plants that looks absolutely stunning on a trellis is this Hoya latifolia species. Sarawak and one of my personal favorites in my collection just period and as you can see I do have her growing up a trellis although I don't know if I have her growing in the right direction because if I'm looking at her this way counterclockwise is that way and if I'm looking at her this way it's that way so like I genuinely don't know you just kind of have to go I usually just go with like the natural way that the plant is already curving anyway this is my Hoya Sarawak and I love her and I have two vines going up both directions so I, I guess we'll see which one grows faster um so far so far it has been this one that would technically be on the left going that way if I'm looking at it this way. You know what? Anyway, this is an example of a great plant to a trellis. It's got fairly large leaves too, so I feel like it would look kind of odd as a trailing plant. It's got the thicker stems. It has some pretty large internodal spacing. So I don't think this would necessarily be the most attractive trailing plant. But then to be honest with you, most Hoya are going to be somewhere in between where they look good trailing or on a trellis. And it really is just up to you and what you prefer. And an example that I have of that is a simple regular degular Hoya carnosa. So here is a regular green Hoya carnosa that I have growing on a trellis. 
and I could take her off of here and let her trail and she would also be totally fine. I do find that my plants do grow a little bit faster when I put them on a trellis. Um, it does seem to like activate growth. So if you have one that's stubborn or it's just got a long vine that isn't attractive to you, then a trellis might not be a bad idea. I do prefer just like these bamboo loop U-shaped ones over like metal ones, but that is my personal preference. So yeah, there it really kind of is just up to you and what you prefer. And like I said, the only two main things that I would keep in mind is how the plant grows. So obviously when you have a plant like this one, this is the Hoya Huskliana Inner Variegated. I think that this makes the cutest trailing plant on the face of the planet because it's got these tiny little leaves, these cute thin little stems, and you really don't see much stem. It's very bushy, it trails really nicely, it fills itself out well, but I've also seen this on a trellis looking absolutely stunning as well. So again, it really just is what you prefer. You can even put a trellis in here and have some of it trellis, some of it trail. There is no right or wrong way to grow your Hoya. There are just certain ones that I think look better trailing versus ones that look better on a trellis. So it really comes down to their growth pattern. Let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree <laughs> with the, what I've said and what do you prefer? I would love to know in the comments below if you guys prefer the aesthetic of a trellis Hoya or the aesthetic of a trailing Hoya. You're never gonna, you're never gonna convince me that this isn't the cutest thing ever. It's not gonna look cuter growing up this way, in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. So the main takeaway from this video, I would hope, is that it really comes down to the growth pattern of the plant. If it's got these cute little tiny leaves, I think it looks so much better trailing. If it's got really thick stems and kind of like sparse leaves like a Hoya carii, you're going to want to put that on a trellis and you're going to want to put it on a trellis ASAP because once those stems harden off, girl, they're so thick. They're not bend in any way you want them to bend without snapping. So I think that these are really easy to trellis too, obviously, because you could do whatever you want with these. They're very bendy why would you want to? She's so cute. So that is really all I have for you guys. I thought that it was a really fun suggestion and a really fun way to talk to you guys about this topic because maybe you guys have these questions and you're curious if there is a right or wrong way to do your Hoya and there really isn't. The only right thing that you need to do if you're not doing is use the Urban Gardener Super Growth Elixir. Urban Gardener, Super Growth Elixir. I will leave it linked down below for you guys with a discount code. If you haven't tried this yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Especially if you're a Hoya head, my Anthurium, love it. And spray all them bitches. And I love it. It's all natural, safe, made in America. It's a spray fertilizer. Like you guys, I promise you, those of you who have been using it along with me for the last year and a half, comment down below so everybody else knows that I'm not just making this up. This is like my holy grail for growing Hoya. So whether you got them trailing or on a trellis, you're gonna need your super growth elixir regardless. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was just really quick and fun. Maybe you got some plant chores or some other chores done around the house while you were watching. That's usually what I do. We have a new lighting setup. I hope that you guys like it. I think that it's it's not getting washed out as I come like closer to the camera. You can definitely like see the true color of things a little bit better. So let me know if it's looking good, looking better in the comments below. And I love you guys. So you should give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out, helps out the algorithm a lot. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I would appreciate it. And I just really appreciate you guys so, so very much for being here. If you watched this whole entire video, leave me cute little pink heart emojis because that's how this plant makes me feel. She's so cute and I love the little the two little pink hearts. They're so cute. I love that emoji. I just overused it. So I started using the black hearts now instead. But anyway, 
I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are out there in the world. Don't forget to spread kindness. Don't forget to drink your water. And I will see you guys in the next one.